So far in module 5 we have uh, seen uh, how to solve a second order differential equation numerically by using RK method and Milne's predictor corrector method. Now calculus of variation, it is a field of mathematical analysis that uses uh, variations which are small changes in functions and functional to find the maxima and minima of functionals. First of all, uh, let us see what do you mean by function. So, if you have taken this as a function, this is a function f of x, y, y dash, it is a function in x, y and y dash. Now, imagine that we are giving small increment to this y and y dash. So, we will write this as x comma y plus h into alpha of x comma y dash plus h into alpha dash of x. This y and y dash is again a function of x. Okay. And now, I am expressing this as a Taylor series expansion as first term plus this term into f plus 1 by 2 factorial into the first derivative of that into. So, this is nothing but a Taylor's expansion and I am omitting the higher terms. Okay. So, by simplifying this we get f of x comma y plus h into alpha x comma y dash plus h into alpha dash of x. I am bringing this to the other side minus f of x y y dash is equal to right hand side we are having this function. This is nothing but a variation. So, I am naming this as delta f and this delta f is called the variation of f. Okay. We started with a function and here we are discussing about the variation of f. Now, coming to functionals. These functionals as I told they are definite integrals involving functions and its derivatives. And now, this function is nothing but a correspondence from a set of numbers to a set of numbers. Correct. Now, consider this functional. Say let s be the set of functions of a single variable x defined over an interval x1 comma x2. Okay. We are defining this s in the interval x1 comma s2. This s is nothing but the set of functions. Then any function which assigns to each function in S a unique real value is called a functional. So, this functional is nothing but a mapping from functions to real numbers because we are assigning a unique real value. Okay. Again I repeat any function which assigns to each function in S, S is nothing but the set of all functions, a unique real value is called a functional. So, it is a mapping from functions to real numbers. So, this we call it as functional. So, in general I will write i of y is equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx. So, this is a functional, these are the examples integral 0 to 1 x plus y dash the whole square dx, this is a functional. Okay. And you can take down only the property statement if i is equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx, then del x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx is equal to integral x1 to x2 del f of x y y dash dx. Okay. So, uh, by seeing these properties, we can say that this del and d by dx or del and integral are commutative with each other. So, we will be using this property. And now coming to the main Euler's equation, in the exam they will ask state and prove. So, this is a statement a necessary condition for the integral i is equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx where y of x1 is equal to y1 and y of x2 is equal to y2 to be an extremum is that del f by del y minus d by dx of del f by del y dash is equal to 0. This is the Euler's equation. This is a very, very, very important derivation and we will be solving problems also based on this equation. So, basically so far in differential calculus uh, we discussed maxima and minima of functions, correct. Here in calculus of variation we deal with maxima and minima of functionals. That is why we have written extremum. Extremum it could be a maximum or minimum. So, we are finding either a maximum or minimum. So, this is a condition for the functional to be an 
extremum which we call it as Euler's equation. Now let us see the proof. I will go very slowly and explain the terms. Let i be an extremum along the curve y is equal to y of x passing through p of x1 y1 and q of x2 y2. Okay. So, I already told that this is an extremum and this is the curve. This curve p of x1 y1 is the first point and q of x2 y2 is the second point. Okay. Let y is equal to y of x plus h into alpha of x be the neighboring curve where h is small joining these points so that we must have alpha of x1 is equal to 0 at p and alpha of x2 is equal to 0 at q. Please listen to this. This is the next curve y of x plus h into alpha of x. So, this is the height y. So, it means what is there inside this is nothing but h into alpha of x. Okay. And this h is very small alpha of x1 is equal to 0 at p. So, in that case it will join these points are common and alpha of x2 is equal to 0 at q. Why? In this point when alpha of x1 is 0 we will get same point y of x. It means these two are coinciding or meeting at this point. This p and q is common for both the curves. Same way at q alpha of x2 will become 0. So, automatically both the curve will become the same at this point. At this point both the curves will become the same. So, this is the increment and please uh, make a note of this alpha of x1 is equal to 0 at p and alpha of x2 is equal to 0 at q. All right. So, now uh, see the diagram and uh, these are the points x and this is the corresponding y distance x1 corresponding y1 distance x2 corresponding y2 distance. This is my first curve uh, where I assume that i is an extremum along this curve and this is my second curve. Okay. So, uh, when h becomes 0 what will happen? These two curves exactly will coincide. If this h becomes 0 these two curves will coincide and hence we will get only one curve right making i an extremum. So, now coming to i this i is nothing but integral x 1 to x 2 f of x comma y of x plus h into alpha of x comma y dash of x plus h into alpha dash of x dx. Okay. It is an extremum when h is equal to 0 because already I told i is an extremum and if these two curves if they coincide automatically we will say this is the only extremum over here. So, this has to be extremum means what is the first point to check maxima and minima. This requires first the derivative should be 0 t i by d h is equal to 0 when h is equal to 0 and here we are treating i as a function of h. Okay. So, we have to find d i by d h first. Okay. So, d i by d h this is i. So, d i by d h is nothing but integral x 1 to x 2 del by del h of f of x comma y of x plus h into alpha f x comma y dash of x plus h into alpha dash of x t x. Okay. Now, what rule is this? Remember the derivative and right hand side partial differentiation of that because we have i right. So, Leibniz rule we have already solved it. So, that is why d i by d h is equal to integral del y del h of these things. Okay. And uh, we are going to apply chain rule for the partial derivative over here. Okay. So, del f with respect to x and then x with respect to h. There are three things right x y y dash. So, f with respect to x and x with respect to h, f with respect to y, y with respect to h, f with respect to y dash and y dash with respect to h dx. So, very simple we are writing what is i and then 
we need the condition di by dh is equal to 0 to find di by dh we are applying Leibniz rule. So, di by dh is equal to integral of del by del h of these things over here on the right hand side and we are applying chain rule ok. So, we have x, y and y dash. So, f with respect to x, x with respect to h, f with respect to y, y with respect to h and f with respect to y dash, y dash with respect to h ok. And already we said that h is independent of x. So, what will happen? Del x by del h will become 0 since it is independent of h when we uh, differentiate it partially this will become 0. So, automatically this term del x by del h is here this will become 0 ok. And what is given y is equal to y of x plus h into alpha of x. Therefore, y dash is y dash of x plus h into alpha dash of x ok. So, we are going to use that and del y by del h is equal to alpha dash of x and del y dash by del h is yeah del y dash by del h is alpha dash of x and this is not alpha dash of x actually this is alpha of x why because y is equal to y of x plus h into alpha of x ok. So, del y by del h will become alpha of x. So, it is not alpha dash and del y dash by del h is if you if I differentiate partially this will become 1. So, I will get alpha dash of x. So, now I got del y by del h as alpha of x del y dash by del h as alpha dash of x I am going to substitute. So, this value I know it became 0 del x by del h and del y by del h I got it as alpha of x del y dash by del h I got it as alpha dash of x I am just going to substitute in this equation. So, we got these values after substituting this is the same di by dh we have substituted alpha of x alpha dash of x first term became 0 ok. So, now we are going to keep this first term as it is and we are going to integrate the second term by parts ok. So, di by dh is equal to integral of del f by del phi into alpha of x I have written this as it is plus now we are going to integrate this second term by parts ok. I have written only the second term over here just to avoid confusion. So, integral u d v what is the formula u v minus integral v t u. So, this is u del f by del y dash and d v is alpha dash of x d x. So, v is integral of d v. So, integral of alpha dash so, integral of derivative something means that function will come as it is v is equal to alpha f. So, and then d u we want d u also for the formula right. So, d by d x of del f by del y dash into d x. So, we are going to substitute this actually this is a second term first term we have kept it as it is. Now, we are going to use this formula u v minus integral v d u I, I already have we have got what is u what is v what is d u just we are going to substitute. So, now see this, this is the first term ok, u v del f by del y dash alpha of x minus integral v is alpha f x and this is d u d by d x of del y by del y dash d x. So, just we have written the second function and we integrated this by parts. Again first function I am keeping this as it is. Now, we are going to apply the limit. So, upper limit minus lower limit del f by del y dash alpha of x 2 minus del f by del y dash alpha of x 1. We have applied limit for the second term minus integral alpha of x into d by d x of del f by del y dash t x. Now, this alpha of x 1 and alpha of x 2 are 0 because already uh, these two functions these two curves they meet at p and q. 
so already in the beginning of the theorem itself we have uh, clearly mentioned one point that alpha of x 1 is equal to 0 and alpha of x 2 is equal to 0 which is really great. So, this term will become 0, this term will become 0. Okay. So, only we have these two terms and now we can combine the integral. Okay. So, integral x 1 to x 2 del f by del y alpha of x is common no. So, we have taken that outside alpha of x is here minus d by d x of del f by del y dash we have taken the alpha of x outside. And in the beginning itself we stated that d i by d h must be 0 when h is equal to 0 for i to be an extremum. I am saying that the integrand in the right hand side must be 0. Okay. So, automatically we will have del f by del y minus d by d x del f by del y dash is equal to 0. So, this is the required Euler's equation and this is the necessary condition for the extremum of the given functional. So, since I said d i by d h is equal to 0 then definitely this should be 0 and this is nothing but your Euler's equation. So, we started with a curve that is y of x and we got another curve in the neighboring and then we wrote what is i and then we require d i by d h because finally, we have to say that d i by d h must be equal to 0 so that i could be an extremum. So, we use Leibniz rule to find d i by d h and then we use chain rule for partial derivatives and hence uh, by using the simplification and simple basic integration by parts we derive this Euler's equation. Then we will solve problems based on this also. Thank you.